There are three very simple modules in Ableton that can produce a wide variety of chord effects using Ableton's MIDI effects modules. I'm going to go through a number of things in this video you probably haven't tried yet in Ableton, and it's going to enable you to build chords in an exciting, generative way that is random but still very musical sounding. So similar to previous videos I've done on the channel, it's really big to start off kind of the right way. So let's say you build or you open up a MIDI track, a blank MIDI track in Ableton. I'm gonna do Control Shift M or Command Shift M on Mac. And I'm picking out four measures for this MIDI clip. And then I'm just gonna go in and just simply grab, you know, C1 and I'll just highlight the measure, Control D or Command D for duplicate. And boom, just like that, Control L or Command L, I've got a loop region set up. It can trigger or loop over and over again. And I have these sparse C notes. When you go up to the top left corner, again, we're talking about scale mode. A lot of really useful workflow stuff with Ableton. If you haven't checked this out yet, if it's off, turn it on. And what's really useful about scale mode is it's tied to the clip which is irrespective of the track, the instrument track that you're on anyway, too. So if I set this to C minor pentatonic, right? Uh, but I, you know, duplicate this clip and I decide to change this clip to Lydian, let's say. Now, when I click back and forth, look up in that corner and the scale and the key, well, I stayed on C, but the scale is changing. So the scale mode is tied to the clip regardless of what instrument you're on, which is a really cool feature. It has tons of music theory implications, by the way, as you get into combining things with this technique. But like I said, we're building a chord generative device. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab a electric, which is Ableton's, you know, kind of vanilla keyboard sound. I've got echo here for some delay, some echo, and some of my own like one knob macros I've done for my Patreon members. And what I'm going to do now, we've got a sound here, obviously playing some some farty C notes there <laughs> and now we're going to go to MIDI effects so a lot of people know about drums they know about instruments they know audio effects MIDI effects oftentimes does get ignored I mean you can obviously grab the arpeggiator here which I'm sure a lot of people watching this have done but you've got this whole world of stuff and it's really amazing there's all these little secrets in this part of the menu and uh, a lot of stuff. I discover new things all the time about this menu. But anyway, we get into random. So random is the thing that's going to generate notes. And we're going to drag that on the left. So audio is on the right. MIDI goes before the instruments on the left. So our MIDI effect, our first one's going to be random. And this one's pretty easy to understand. The big thing is these three modules are all working together to light up this part of the screen, whether it goes plus, neutral, or negative. And I like to turn the chance up, but I like to go conservative on choices to interval, which kind of operates like a ratio relationship. I don't want to get too bogged down. You can read the info screen on the left. But if I go like five and two or something like that, it keeps things from getting too wacky, but I'd like to turn the chance up. And then you can choose random or alt. Alt is a round robin, uh, but you know, let's just go with this for now. And what this is going to do is trigger random notes on the electric keyboard. Now these notes will be, well, random, but if I want them to sound like the scale degree, I picked minor pentatonic in this case, then I'll hit that. Maybe let's change it for this video. We'll go to minor or natural minor. And now it's gonna pick out the natural minor scale because that feature, that little purple box is turned on, right? And we got some nice effects and some echo already happening, but you could also add echo to the MIDI notes. So you can have echo on audio notes. You can have echo on the MIDI information and that's note echo. I'm going to drag that in. This is a really cool module. You can leave it on the default too, which is like an eighth note subdivision. It's like a delay pedal, but for MIDI notes, uh, the big thing with this that actually matters that we should talk about is delay and feedback. I turn these way down. These are very aggressive and, and they do a lot of uh, blooming. Uh, so I tend to turn these down to keep things 
kind of under control. Notice how we made a pretty simple sparse MIDI clip. There's not a lot of, there's a lot of space here on purpose. And um, that's basically it. You can do cool stuff with this though as well. Like I could, for instance, go ahead and change the pitch and go up by, you know, three steps. Uh, that's really cool as well. And you'll notice that when you do that, you'll get more than one note happening because of the, the note echo. Doesn't sound particularly diatonic right now. It doesn't sound like it's fitting in C minor. That's on purpose because when you add on something like the chord function or the chord module, I guess I should call it, and we add that next right before the instrument, we can turn on the scale mode for this as well. Now with chord, and I'm doing this right now with my Patreons where we're building out different chord voicings, but this module can be confusing as because if you don't really know a lot of music theory, it can be just, you have no idea. And if you even know music theory, it can be confusing still because this module uses scale degrees. So you can see there's SD there, that's scale degree. So that's super confusing because people are confused enough the difference between intervals and semitone values. Scale degree values are even a whole other thing. Like for instance, seven, that's not a seventh interval, that's an octave. Because seven scale degrees in a diatonic or a, you know, a minor scale, a heptatonic scale, seven note scale, that's an octave. So this can be confusing, but for this video, just follow my lead. Seven scale degrees gives you an octave. Nine scale degrees gives you a third above an octave, which is a tenth, the interval of a tenth. It's a beautiful interval. Uh, 13 scale degrees, that's going to give you a seventh interval or, you know, a seventh above an octave. And that's kind of like what a jazz piano player would do where they play a nice open voicing, a root, a third or a tenth, and a high seventh. It gives you a seventh chord. And now you're going to notice that the sound is changing and the note echo is giving us an extra note there that's getting quantized by the scale mode degree. It's a really cool sound. Now, because we're in a minor scale to the natural minor scale, you know, the second scale degree is a diminished chord. If you're in the major scale, the seventh scale degree is a diminished chord. So you can get these little kind of uh, dissonant, you know, it happened right off the bat when we hit play. It's going to give you that dissonant sound. And I talked about this in a previous video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Um, because we talked about how like when you're generating stuff, like generating sound, uh, you want to go to something like a pentatonic scale sometimes because it's going to lack half steps. And by taking away those half steps, you're taking away the diminished tonality that is just naturally in a um, natural minor scale or a major scale because of the second or the seventh scale degree. So... Notice we're not running into that diminished chord sound anymore because it's gone. So when you're generating, a lot of your generative instruments can be in a minor pentatonic scale and it doesn't affect anything adversely because like we said before, you've got the clips that are independent. So your scale mode is dependent on clip. It's not dependent on like the, the entire session has to be in that scale. Uh, I think that's kind of a, a thing that I've noticed people not realizing. So I just want to point that out again. Now you've got a really cool sound and you can add other things. You can strum the chord, maybe add 30 milliseconds, add crescendo that has a great sound. And you've got something that's generating chords and you can have a lot of fun with it. Now scale degree is confusing. I'm actually building a chord chart for my Patreon members. I did a full length tutorial on this down below. There's tons of presets as well. That's all linked down below. So if you wanna get my presets, you want to get some different uh, chord voicing presets, you can grab all that down below, but feel free to give this a try. You can do so much with just these three modules. It's pretty amazing. And believe me, you can take this so much further. Hit the subscribe button if you're new here, you like doing these different things. And uh, yeah, have fun with it. Have fun making music. I'll see y'all later.